Welcome to Pro Practice, your guide to piano mastery. I'm Josh Wright, and today's episode is based on the Bach two-part invention in F major, uh, number eight in the series of two-part inventions. I'm really excited to be filming with this, uh, well, recording with this new microphone. Um, this is a Neumann microphone, and we have two AKGs inside the piano, so I hope you... Um, Enjoy the enhanced sound. We're getting true stereo sound panning left and right inside the piano with our new mics and then a dedicated microphone for my voice so you can hear my instructions a little more clearly than usual when I have to put the mic here to not interrupt the overhead shot. So uh, I hope you enjoy that. The first thing that I want to talk about is the importance of choosing good finger numbers. So we're going to go through, uh, let's maybe take uh, the first 11 bars, and I'm going to take you through every single finger number in the right hand and then the left hand, and then the next thing I want to talk about after that is articulation uh, and some things that we can do to add variety to this piece. One of the things that is so important in Bach is to vary dynamics and vary articulations and vary voicings, and uh, those are all important things that we will get to in this tutorial, but I want to start with the basics because if you don't have the basics, you won't have any success playing the piece fluidly. So I hope uh, these suggestions help you in your studies. The first uh, measure here, one, two, one, three, one, five, three, two, one, four, three, two, one, four, three, two, one, two, four, one, five, one. Then this is up to you what you want to put right here. I would probably put a, a one or a two, probably a two just to feel like it's smoothly getting into there to bar four. Two, four, three, four, but then switch to ones on the A's. One, four, three, four, 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 one, four, three, four. One, so fin fill that finishes your uh, little idea and then reset the hand for a new position. One, four, two, five, one, three, four, three, two, one, four, three, two, one, four, three, two, one, four, three, two, four, three, two, one, four, three, two, one, four, three, two, one. And then this is up to you again, four, three, four, or three, two, three. It's totally up to you. I would probably use 323, three, just it's a little bit of a stronger fingering, but 434 four is still pretty strong. One, two, five. One, five, one, four, five. And I just realized I didn't play any of this in the intro, so let me go ahead and play a bit of this. So um, that just gives you a little flavor if you're not already familiar with the piece. Okay, let's take the left hand. Now left hand, you can start with a five, three, five, one, five, one, or you could start with a two, uh, four. Four, two, four, one, five, one. Now a lot of students say, why would you switch there from fours to a five on that final F? If four, two, four, one feels better in your hand than five, three, five, one, absolutely do it because this last little part the five one that we're doing to that f octave is gonna feel good no matter what okay um two three four one two three four two three four five and you may have noticed that as i was talking about the right hand starting in like bar two five three two one i put a little pause when i was talking four three two one four three two one same thing in the left hand in bar three one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, three, four, five. If you think of those in those types of groups, it should make it really easy. If you're thinking two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, three, four, five, it's kind of hard to remember, but one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, three, four, five. That's very easy to remember and it feels very intuitive in the hand. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, three, four, five, three, one, three, one, five, and then these, again, these patterns, uh, just repeat. I would play three, one, two, one, three, one, two, one, three, one, two, one, four, one, two, one, three, one, two, one, three, one, two, one, four, one, two, one, three, one, two, three, 
sorry, <laughs> let me start in bar seven there. Four, one, two, one. Three, one, two, one. Three, one, two, one. So you may have noticed in those bars, the first uh, note in bar six and bar seven was a four, even though the pattern is three, one, two, one. Three, one, two, one. Three, one, two, one. Four is just helping us transition in a little less tense of a way. Um, four just feels a little bit more right on top of those notes. One, four, one, two. That feels so much better than one, three. One, three is a little more stretched out there. So that's why I put the fours there, even though the basic pattern is three, one, two, one. Okay, continuing on um, in bar eight. Three, five, two, five, one, five, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Okay, so again, you're usually watching for B flats, but there he does that natural in bar 10. Watch out for that. Four, start in bar 10 again. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, two, one, five. And then we've modulated to the key of C major there. Um, so how do you know uh, when a key is going, when, a, when the piece is going to modulate to a different key? Usually you will see uh, accidentals. So natural signs, flat signs, sharp signs, those are usually triggers to show that you're moving to a new key area. Sometimes we will call that just a tonicization. It's just a little temporary um, tonicizing of a different key, making that new key tonic just temporarily. But this is a full-on modulation. We're firmly in the key of C major there before he departs in bar 15. And then he does a bunch of sequences, which is similar ideas through a variety of keys. Okay, so we're learning a lot about uh, choices with fingering in here, uh, learning about how Bach is moving between a key via the B naturals that we see uh, starting in bar seven, because we see that G7, which will eventually go to C major in bar 12. So just, just be aware, when you see those B naturals, that can be a little signal in your mind like, hey, we're starting a gradual move to go to C major. Okay, let's try putting this together very slowly. And this might be way too fast. You could put it together in this tempo. Or even slower if you need to. And I always recommend putting it together in small little pieces. But just for time's sake, we aren't going to take you through every possible practice scenario. But hit the bigger concepts today. So let's jump back to bar five, hands together. Let's see. Bach can get a little finicky. I've only worked on this for a few days to prepare for this tutorial. I've never played it before. Um, it's been really fun preparing for this tutorial though. So watch those fingerings in there, uh, like in bar 10 and 11. I even tripped up right there as you saw. So maybe I'll try that a little slower. Until you lock that in. Another little tip that I like to use is playing add-on. You can do add-on note by note by note, just adding one note at a time and then one more note and one more note. Uh, another fun way to do add-on is to do it backwards. So going there and then, and then uh, I'm doing it by beat here. So one full beat, but see how nice that is? Because then you're always stopping on well, we're stopping at the beginning of bar 12, which is a, a nice strong cadence in C major. Okay, so, but you could keep going back if that's still troubling you. And then one more. Sorry, uh, it sometimes is a little hard. That's why writing in all this fingering that I'm giving you is also a good idea. Okay, the next thing that I want to discuss is articulation.